All aboard the Groove Train slash Sydney's Central Station record spins. The 1st of January, 1997. The Australian. Out of Control on Weekends. By George Zappaminondos. They come searching for the soundtrack to their lives, to pick up a new pair of Puma trainers, purchase tickets to a rave or browse over an import copy of The Face. But mostly they come to soak up the vibe. Central Station Records, and Darlinghurst, is a place to hip-hop until you drop. The various style tribes who might converge on the store any Saturday afternoon include ravers, skateboarders, graffiti boys, hardcore homeboys, house fans, hippies, zippies, technological hippie, modern primitives, muscle boys both gay and straight, lipstick lesbians, artistic types, Japanese tourists and other die-hard nightclub denizens who rise late in the day. Studied together, they form a dazzling microcosm of life. Milling around the hard wax section devoted to electronic music on vinyl, still hot property in the dance scene, are two boys in blue jeans and Bonds t-shirts. One has red tufts of hair sticking out from a shaved head, the other green spear puncturing the underside of his nose, and big plastic bolts that look like Lego pieces in his ears. He is searching for a track he heard in a club the night before. He asks that I not print the name of the inner city club for fear of Joe Blow from Campbelltown crashing. Look, I've been called a weirdo, a faggot, and I just don't need it, he says. And don't write that I've got a face full of piercings. He warns. But you do, I respond. He smiles and pokes out his tongue to reveal even more. Yeah, and they glow in the dark. What soon becomes apparent is that hardly anyone admits to being a raver anymore. I'm not a raver, insists one woman who couldn't have been more than 19, her whole face curling up with revulsion, clutching a t-shirt that reads Amsterdam Apple. The media backlash following Anna Wood's death has made the raver a malign species. Admittedly they are the youngest of the party set, and people soon grow out of monotonous, headache-inducing computer drivel. But it's not all bad, argues DJ Tor Kamada, real name Brenton, who works in the hard wax section. Tor Kamada, whose name comes from the original Spanish Inquisitor General, points out the differences between happy hardcore, poppy sentimental stuff, jungle, drum and bass heavy, gaba, thrashy techno, and purist techno. Happy hardcore is what the little kiddies get into at e-taking raves, he says with Mac Horror. We encourage people to listen to the purest or Detroit techno. This is like classical music, people actually sit down and compose this stuff. To demonstrate, he ushers me over to the desk past numerous other customers sampling discs on turntables. He puts on a tune called Indian Summer, plonks headphones on my ears, and cranks up the volume. It's a richly layered and mesmerizing trance track, complete with sitars. I'm impressed. People swarm to Central as if it's the center of the universe. A boy with spiky hair from Cronulus says he drops in here every weekend, floats around for a couple of hours, and spends around $100 to $200 each time. A graffiti artist from Parramatta tells me he comes to hang out with his posse, peruse the graph mags from New York and dis ravers. Hate them, he mumbles. Just don't like their music. Graphs prefer hip-hop and breakdancing, the dance style that features kids spinning on their heads to jerky music, which Malcolm McLaren popularized in the 1980s and which is experiencing a revival. In the front of the store, which brims with CDs and chart-topping vinyl, a long black counter stretches from one side of the room to the other. Behind the stands a phalanx of assistants with a preternatural ability for identifying the latest dance floor hit by listening to someone humming a few bars. Elbowing my way through the crowd, I ask an attendant munching on burger rings the question of the moment. Who killed Tupac Shocker? He looks at me as if I am seriously rupee. Shocker was the rapper recently gunned down in Las Vegas. His murder remains unsolved, but this man apparently has a lead. Suge Knight, his rival in the president of Death Row Records.
I am just about to give up the search for a true blue raver when a teen with a skateboard wrapped behind his back cautiously admits to being a raver or skater. I've only been doing it for two years, but I was hooked the first time I went to a rave. But, he adds, he doesn't take drugs, and neither do any of his friends. People on drugs have just got the worst heads. A manager named Sean tells me there are at least four teen parties in the next few weeks. Selling well today is high on hope, which promises two rooms of wicked sounds and top banana tunes, whatever that means. Another party, entitled Hardcore 96, claims on its flyer that other promoters don't know the meaning of the word. Their brand is no bullshit, unstoppable explosive hardcore, do they blow the place up? Three hours after my arrival the music is reaching ear-splitting levels. People are communicating using sign language. Track pants with huge flares are sailing out the door. The mood is strictly, in club parlance, high and RG. Does Sean ever feel like slipping on something soothing? He frowns. No, that's not what this place is about. C. Nationwide News Proprietary Limited, 1997.